Dan Big Daddy Wilkinson, the consensus number one overall pick. We think we know who the first pick is. Young man named Dan Wilkinson, defensive tackle extraordinaire from Ohio State. I saw this mammoth person sprinting effortlessly up and down the field, leading the pack, and naturally said, who is this guy? He looked like a man among boys. A pig, six foot four and a quarter, 313 pounder, ran that 472, 32 reps at 225, awesome weight room strength. He set some uh, combine numbers that were ridiculous. It was almost like Superman. And for whatever reason, people decided that Dan Wilkinson is going to be the next Reggie White. He's about as high a rated defensive lineman as you've seen, is that correct? I really think, Chris, he's one of the top three defensive linemen in the last decade, up there with Reggie White and Cortez Kennedy. And the point is, there isn't going to be another Reggie White. There are big bucks ahead for Ohio State sophomore Dan Big Daddy Wilkinson. The Cincinnati Bengals made the 315-pound defensive tackle the top pick in today's NFL draft. I'm very happy to be here. I'm very, you know, glad that Cincinnati chose me as number one pick. And uh, basically, I'm ready to, you know, get in camp as soon as possible and strap it up. You know, the knock on Dan was in the big games, he'd show up and flash and play brilliantly. And then against Purdue, when the game to me, he kind of just, like, disappeared. Was he a guy that had the will, desire, motor to be a dominant player every single snap. And talking to high school coaches that he played against up in Dayton, that was the knock on him in high school. There were always glimpses of the talent and the greatness, but it was never sustained. He would break your heart. You'd watch a game and go, there he is, there's Big Daddy. And then the next game or the next couple of games, he would disappear. Big Daddy certainly wasn't the next Reggie White. But he did play for 13 years in the NFL. He was a very serviceable NFL defensive lineman who lasted for more than a decade. There's no shame in that. But when you are selected number one, there is a burden of expectation that comes with that, and he never quite lived up to that standard. The Carolina Panthers have traded the first pick in the draft to the Cincinnati Bengals. Oh, okay. This is Cincinnati. Scott going to John Carter to a running game that was not existent last year. And also factor yes. in Eric Bieniemy and James Joseph, who they added from free agency. John Carter yes. needs an offensive line. Thanks. So the Bengals have to address Cincinnati that. Bengals have selected running back from Penn State, Kajana Carter. The Jacksonville Jaguars are now on the clock. Basically, you moved up four spots to get who you wanted to be the number one pick in the draft. And then for a second round pick, which, you know, when you look at today's deals, that, that's, a, that's a very good deal. The optimism in landing the best prospect in the draft faded in Carter's first preseason game. The, uh, I think my third running play and the eighth play overall on our team. Robert Porsche, who was a pro bowler, beat the guard clean was there in the backfield. Kijana like, stuck his foot in the ground to avoid him, and that's when I think he blew the knee out. Just try to plant and cut back to the left, and just fell down. The first pick in the 1995 draft had a torn ACL. Having Kajana Carter get not just an injury, but a serious injury right from jump in the preseason, it was a disaster, and it set that franchise back. He was tremendous. He was a tremendous football player. The production, the quickness, you know, we saw him in the mini camps. He seemed like a pretty sure bet to be a, a very, very good player in our league. He wasn't ever the same that I saw. Didn't see that same explosiveness. So the, the consequences of having a surgery like that, an injury like that, were, were much more uh, uh, difficult to overcome. Carter returned in 1996, but a rash of injuries limited him to just 14 starts over seven NFL seasons. It makes me mad a little bit. Does that make somebody a bust? It wasn't because of my talent. It was because of injuries. And it just so happened that it was like one injury after another after another, and they never really got to see the type of player I think I, was, I could have been in the league. 